I want to tell you a story about Nancy Green. Uh, she was a wealthy, wealthy superstar in the advertising world. And she was uh, the advertising world's first living trademark. So she was the first person whose face and image and everything else was trademarked. She was 56 years old, and she was selected uh, as a spokesperson for a new product that would made its debut in 1893 at the Fair and Exposition in Chicago. Well, she was the one that was introducing this thing at the fair, and that fair was amazing. There was everything at that fair. Nobody, the things that happened at the Chicago's World's Fair, nobody had ever seen these things before. It was the first Ferris wheel and the first light bulb, all of these things. Um, and she was such a good uh, storyteller. She was so appealing, so warm. Everybody loved her. And so they actually had to put extra police around her booth because she would start in and talk about this product and everybody would come and the word spread and they had to keep people moving. So they, she had actually had extra uh, security on that. She was signed to a lifetime contract. She t- toured the entire country, extremely well paid. Uh, she was a national spokesperson, which she became a leading advocate against poverty and in favor of uh, equal rights for people in Chicago. She had her job until she was 89 years old. You don't know her as Nancy Green. You didn't even know that she was born a slave in 1834 in Montgomery County uh, in Kentucky. You know her as Aunt Jemima. Now, how is erasing Aunt Jemima helping black people? And by the way, I asked uh, Stu, you know, he's our stat guy. And so he looks at everything through stats. Stu, how offensive is Aunt Jemima and Aunt Jemima syrup to the black community? You know, pretty easy way to test that um, because you can look at exactly who buys Aunt Jemima syrup. First of all, Aunt Jemima mm-hmm. is the most popular syrup in America uh, by a massive margin. It's about... Three wow. times um, as uh, popular as some of the other names you would think of Mrs. Butterworth. Um, Which is going to be gone, too. F- yeah, she's totally toast. Uh, Mrs. Butterworth's on the chopping yeah. block for sure. Hungry Jack. I think it's four times as much as Hungry Jack. And so it's sell- they sell a lot of syrup, and it's something that people don't realize how big of a deal this is to shut down a brand that has three times as much business as anybody else in the market. And this is mm-hmm. it's, not a, it's not a little tiny thing. Um, but what's interesting is this same thing that happens all the time. You know, us white people come to you and we say, hey, Native Americans, you know what? You should be offended by the Washington Redskins name. And Native Americans say, hey, shut up. We'll tell you when we're offended about something, okay? Uh, because it's 90% of uh, Native Americans are not offended by it when yeah, they actually pull people. Yeah, but they don't know. Right. They're native americans we're white right so we know what should offend them it's the ultimate explaining isn't it oh my we're oh, telling them it's unbelievable we should yeah. be offended by something they're not offended by so how could so you- i'm getting the impression <laughs> that man jemima is not offensive to african-americans well get it you'd think first of all let's start with white people it's a very racist product, as we know. So uh, you would so we'd love think it. we would love we'd this love product, it. right? Now, of course, of course. Uh, the, uh, Without the, even knowing it. Of course. The Consumer uh, Research uh, Outfit uh, numerator d- does studies on brands, and they have a scale basically mm-hmm. that works like this. It's got a, it goes from 0 to 200 is the scale, with 100 being average. So the average consumer, if they were uh, a particular group, they'd be right at 100. Anything lower than that is below average. Anything above that is above average. So... Uh, with white people, the score on the 0 to 200 scale is 88. They're slightly below average as a uh, p- people who appreciate and buy uh, Aunt Jemima syrup. A little bit below average. Not the so case. So Aunt Jemima m- mm-hmm. must be hated by the African-American community because it's so offensive. It's a racist. Can you imagine this product that is being sold with racist imagery, something so bad they mm-hmm. need to pull it off the market? It must be, what, a zero, you would think, maybe a five, mm-hmm. you, you know? Th- Right. Here's yeah, the sure. on a, again. The scale is zero to two hundred. The African American score. Oh my gosh. For uh, for Aunt Jemima is one hundred and ninety seven. It is three points away from perfect. Perfect. Right. Three points away from perfect. The people who are buying Aunt Jemima syrup largely are African Americans who love this. In fact, 
What is cur currently going on is we are rewarding uh, this, uh, I guess, our own white guilt here with pulling off one of African-Americans' favorite products in the grocery store. We're taking it off the shelves so they understand that it's racist against them. Thanks a lot, white oh people. Gosh. We really appreciate it, I'm sure. Holy cow. Um, by the way, I would like to point out, you know who freaking hates Aunt Jemima? Asians. Asians hate Aunt Jemima. I don't know why, but I want to know. It's a new investigation we're launching here. Only a 49 out of 200. And I will say, unlike Sarah Gonzalez, our own Sarah Gonzalez, who tweeted that you should never uh, buy... She was, the only thing offensive about Aunt Jemima is that uh, their people are still buying that crappy corn syrup garbage. Uh, Hispanics love <laughs> Aunt Jemima, too. <laughs>